Hello there. Oop, my connection is weak and my picture is dark, but I'm going to talk anyway. Uh, this is Robin Bremer from robinbremer.net, best-selling author of 34, 36 books and growing. And today I want to share with you um, how to pray over situations, circumstances, and events that happen in everyday life. And what prompted this video is I was on Facebook and I saw on Facebook, I saw that uh, NBC, I think it was, uh, NBC New York or something like that, or ABC New York, had a live feed to uh, an event that was happening. Somebody apparently was climbing the Brooklyn Bridge or something and was going to commit suicide. And so they had a live feed on it and I was reading the comments and I was just I just could not believe the comments that people were, were writing. Uh, they think it's a joke. They think that somebody committing suicide is just a way of inconveniencing their ride to work that day or just a way of, inc uh, of blocking traffic and taking, you know, just um, getting attention. And I was so saddened by those comments. But then there was something that got me excited. There was a few people who said, uh, Father, help that person. Instead of, jump, jump, kill yourself, jump. Uh, they were There was a few people. And so I just got on there and I, I just said, I said, I posted this and I knew I might get some backlash because uh, most people on there weren't, almost all the people on there weren't Christians. So I just said, in Jesus' name, I bind the spirit of suicide on this person. I take authority over it. I forbid it to operate on them. I command, um, that spirit of suicide to go, that spirit that would say that they're worthless and they're nobody to go, the spirit of rejection, and I loosen the love of God, the peace of God, the presence of God, stuff like that. And I typed it out because I believe that my words have power, just like your words have power. We have power and authority over everything that's not heaven on earth. We have power over all the spirits, and every negative event that is happening is influenced by the spirit realm. The, de the demons because they are trying to um, kill steal and destroy us and God's trying to give us abundant life so whenever you come across a situation like this a circumstances event situation that is not like it would be on earth sickness disease a car accident a fire ambulance and so on you want to take authority and dominion and I remember one time I had followed uh, and I probably shared the story with you before but I had I follow sometimes I follow uh, police or uh, ambulances if, if they're in my neighborhood I'll follow them and I'll go right in with them and one time one of my neighbors uh, down the street the ambulance had come and they had they were in the garage trying to revive this guy and apparently he had died and I was just learning to raise the dead I had already tried about four times this is probably about my fifth try to raise the dead and so I asked them if I could go in and pray for the man and they kind of looked at me like I was weird why he's dead why I pray for him but they said, yeah, as soon as the family says goodbye. And so the family gathered around them and the, the, e, the emergency workers were all freaked out, especially this girl, because I guess she had never worked on somebody who had died or lost somebody. And so the family was in the house and they'd go out, and, uh, you know, talk to the body and scream and yell. And it was taking so long for them to go in and say goodbye to this relative that I, I decided not to, to, to stay. But I went in the house, introduced myself, say hey listen I'm a minister uh, is there anything I can do to help can I pray and, and I was able to pray for the family members in the house and speak comfort over them and hold them um, and you know it was taking quite a while I spoke to the wife of the man who died and was able to comfort her and uh, then um, you know I decided to leave instead of going out laying hands on the dead man and commanding him to raise from the dead I quietly said it to myself and as I was leaving and I decided well they're still mourning it's not the time or the place uh, to go out and do that because they were still freaking out about it but that was an event that came up in my life that I took authority and dominion over and a lot of times as Christians what we do is we go by an accident and we're like this you know we're looking what's going on what's going on you know we want to know what's going on but only because we're being nosy not because we care and as a Christian, you have power and authority over everything, every accident. In fact, God puts me behind uh, tractor trailers that are swaying and cars that were swaying 
you know, they're falling asleep or they're looking on this, reading messages on their cell phone and they're going like this. And I get behind them very often because I'll stay behind them and I'll pray and I'll, I'll speak to them to wake up, you know, and so on. And one time I was behind this car that was going like this and had a trailer. Well, I was not the direct car behind it, but the second one behind it. <clears throat> well, he went like this and he swerved and his, he, he got more and more fishtailing until the trailer he was pulling flipped over, flipped over the car several times. He, they landed in the grass. I pulled over and stopped uh, the first one on the scene besides the car between us. Um, and he, the driver got up, ran around the car. His wife got out. She had glass all over her, in her butt and everywhere. And um, they didn't speak a word of English. They spoke Spanish. And so I got her. It was very cold. I got her to come and sit in my car while I called 911. And 911 uh, took about 20 minutes to come. So she was sitting in my car. I gave her my phone number and stuff. And I think I drove them somewhere after they talked to the police or something. But anyway, it turned out that they were Christians and they were on their way to Mexico or something and they had so they had sent me a message and saying thank you for helping them and so on but those are just some situations that I took authority over and got involved in I am a spiritual policeman and so are you and our job is to enforce what the blood of Jesus paid for us to have see he didn't just pay for Christians to be healed Christians to raise from the dead Christians to be prosperous he paid for the whole world to have that stuff and the goodness of God leads to repentance the repentance means they change their mind they see how good God is and they want to have a relationship with him and so you can use everyday situations circumstances and events to bring to make Jesus real to people for people to experience his goodness um, because someday those things might happen to you and who knows you know, you want someone else to be praying for you. You reap what you sow. And, but that's not why we do it. We do it because we have authority and, and dominion over these spirits that are causing death and uh, fear and, and all kinds of evil. Uh, we have authority over them. So we want, to, we want to use that authority. It's like if we don't use our authority that Jesus gave us, it's like Jesus died and suffered for no reason. It's like... It's like all of a sudden he, he, you know, you see an accident, you go by an accident instead of looking at it. If you take authority and dominion over that situation, this is basically how I do it. I say, when I hear a siren or see a siren, a police, I don't care if it's police, fire, or ambulance, <clears throat> for 24 years I've been doing this, I say, except two times I've missed it and I felt so bad because somebody could have died because I didn't pray. And that's not prideful. I just know how much power and authority I have. And you have the same. So I usually say when I hear a siren, I always say, and my kids used to tease me because if I hear a siren, I start praying. And oftentimes when my kids were little, it was on TV because I still was watching TV then. And I would pray and they'd laugh and they'd go, Mom, it's on TV. But anyway, I say, Father, in Jesus' name, I just command, um, I just plead the blood of Jesus over that situation and circumstance. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> take authority over it. I speak there will not be no death of livestock, property, animals, or people. Um, I ask you to give wisdom, knowledge, and discernment to rescue workers and everybody involved and to protect them, to get them on the scene as fast as possible, to have wisdom to know what to do. And I ask, and in Jesus' name, I ask you to draw everybody to you that is on the scene that is involved give them repentant spirit give them ears to your eyes to see put laborers in their path to give them the gospel message in a way that they can understand i bind the spirit of fear and death in jesus name and i thank you father that nobody will go die and go to hell today in this situation and i pray that and sometimes i have opportunity <clears throat> um, like the one of the other things i did i, I saw uh, an ambulance came to someone in my neighborhood so I um, followed it. It's my neighborhood. I have a right to. I followed it and I went in the house and talked to the people and it turned out this one woman I had cancer and she was going to the hospital or something like that. So I got to pray with her. I got to lead her to the Lord. And then 
<clears throat> I found out months later that I went back to that house. I knocked on the door to minister to them. And I found out months later that her mother got saved too because of that, because the daughter got saved because I followed the ambulance. So the mother and the daughter got saved and that was really cool. But I find out my neighbors have cancer. One time I went to her house, I prayed for her, laid hands on her, uh, you know, for healing. Uh, I was in the store one time and I was talking about the Lord to somebody and this lady comes walking over to me and she says, I, you were talking about the, or no, she was talking about the Lord to somebody. Or she was saying, the daughter was saying to the mother, Mom, when are you going to go to the hospital? That that um, that lump on your leg is red and swollen. And, and the doctor said, if you don't get surgery really soon, you're going to die. I want you to get surgery. Well, God told me, he says, go over in the other aisle and pray for that lady. So I went over to her and I said, excuse me. Um, I, I overheard what you said and I, you know, I'd like to pray for you because I believe God wants to heal you. And she, and the, the mother was all excited. She said, oh, I believe you're a son of God. And so I laid hands on her and I commanded the cyst, it was a cyst, I commanded the cyst to dry up, to die, to shrink, to be gone. I took authority over it. I spoke life to her leg, gave her my phone number and stuff. <clears throat> she called me maybe a half a year later. Somehow she found me a half a year later and she says, you wouldn't believe what happened the next morning I love it she said the next morning when I got up the cyst had shrunk until you could hardly see it anymore and she said and I took the scripture book that you gave me and I confessed those scriptures over it and then it was gone I didn't have to go to the hospital I didn't have to get a surgery so you need to use your authority and your dominion over every situation circumstances and events that happen in life you have to remember if it isn't lining up with the Word of God, if it isn't heaven on earth, <clears throat> you're the one that took notice of it. You were the one that was there because you are the one that has the authority, the power, and the dominion, and the um, ability to change the situation. God showed me that when you become aware of a situation, it's because you're the answer. Um, like when I would go to Walmart, sometimes I would start feeling condemned. I would, I would see everybody, you know, okay, this person's in a wheelchair. Uh, this person is walking with a limp and this person is, and I could lay hands on all these people, but, um, and, and it's like, I got things to do. I don't want to lay hands on all these people. And I was starting to get condemned because I wasn't laying hands on all the, those people and praying for them to, and, and speaking, commanding healing, not praying for them to be healed, but commanding healing. And the God said, this is a perimeter for you. If you're in line and somebody starts complaining about something hurts, that's your signal to pray for them. And so I was no longer feeling condemned that I didn't pray for every Tom, Dick, Joe, and Harry that passed by me that, that needed um, an answer to prayer. So when I'm standing in line, what usually happens is the cashier will say, oh, I am so tired. My head hurts. My feet hurt. I can't believe this diabetes is really really killing me I'll say okay I uh, that's my signal I'm gonna say you know what let me pray for you real quick right here I said you don't have to close your eyes or anything I know you're working you know and, and I'll just take authority and pray for it quietly and usually they're like really they really get excited and stuff and also God will give me words for people and he'll give you words for people you know we are called, all of us, to heal the sick, raise the dead, and cast out demons, cleanse the lepers. We're all called to give prophetic words to people. If you just speak the word to somebody, that's a prophetic word. Uh, and you can give them encouragement. Uh, somebody somebody who is feeling worthless or something, um, you could just say something like, you know, God is saying to you that, that you are holy and blameless and above reproach that you are created in his image and his likeness and he loves you. That's all scriptures. And that's what he is saying to them. They just might not know it or they might just need to be reminded. So I'm just trying to encourage you and to remind you that the reason that you're where you are, when you are in situations and circumstances is because you have the answer. Somebody else is not there, you're there. So you need to take authority over the situation and, and, and you need to loosen the ministering spirits. You need to uh, ask the Holy Spirit to, um, 
to go and to minister to them and take authority over the demons that are harassing that person. And so, anyway, um, I am getting to the laundromat to do my laundry now. Um, so I love talking to you all. I just find it so much fun. I would probably do about three of these videos a day if I could get in my car and, and just do them. But um, anyway, have a blessed day. Uh, remember to share this video with your friends and social media site. And remember, uh, a lot of the stuff I say is in my book, uh, are on my books, are in my books, uh, because I want you to be able to... Um, I want you to be able to walk in the power and dominion. Nobody, nobody special, and um, you're you're just as awesome as anyone a child of God and have as much power. So start walking in authority, start walking in dominion, and and change the world around you and change the world. So my name is Robin Bremer. .net is my website. Site. Uh, you can also go to my Facebook uh, page, not profile, but page. Uh, and uh, if you are an author, I publish books and I coach and consult uh, through publishing books. Um, so check that out because I like to I like to promote my authors. I mostly deal with um, ministers and uh, Christians in leadership with my books. Okay, love you all. Talk to you later. Bye bye.